What's been really fantastic about our approach with the students is that through them being at the centre of things, um, we've been really aware about student voice and making sure that they have a, a place, especially in a big modern learning environment. Um, through observations of watching the children, we're noticing um, the same children not giving in, feeling comfortable about talking in the space because there's so many children around. Um, I think working in a modern learning environment, you have the perspective of a classroom that you don't get in a one-to-one -one environment, so you're able to roam and look at the children that aren't engaged in their learning. So together we've come up with our approach of making sure that there's three opportunities for voice. So we want to make sure there's always that opportunity for um, oral participation so they can lend you know, the children that want to put their hand up and give the answer can. But for those children not wanting to participate like that, we have question walls where they can write their answers and then always having a form available on their blog so all children have, can have their voice heard, and especially in a large space like our one. Yeah, so we've got a little post-it note and we um, like write something about chickens and then we just stick it on the piece of paper and people can come up and look. But like for the people who are too shy, we can you can go into in this USB moment you can go into the blog, which is this, and click on the page that says inquiry form and that will it will send to your one of your teachers and then your teacher will give you your response without anyone else knowing. So when we um, set up the activities in the morning, I guess we're kind of looking for things that will inspire them to learn in a particular way. But a lot of, of that is letting it go as a teacher of what they should be learning and letting them take it in their own direction. So um, through putting out some cloths, you can see children take, have created a cafe, put out a plaster scene and they'll make um, a whole creative scene on something. Whereas I might be thinking, I want you to go and make this with the plaster scene or do X, Y, Z, but you have to let go of a lot of that. Um, a lot of it is teaching the children how to find information as well so they can act on those impulses. So behind the play-based learning is teaching the critical thinking and how to find information using the internet. Um, uh, so this is the cafe. Uh, it's a, a choose what you want cafe and you can think it's free. Uh, I'm the cashier and I would like to show you around. Over here is the, one of the tables where the customers sit. Over there, there's another one. Over here, this is where the people like order the food and they bake it. Over here, we have like the cups and stuff. Uh, it was originally hat making, and then Carly brought up the idea of a shop. But then everyone started calling it a cafe, and we just decided to go with it. Um, yesterday morning, Nathan had found a book on periscopes, and it was in a Star Wars book, so he was very excited to come from the library. Um, then all of a sudden, he had been researching information on periscopes that turned into a YouTube tutorial on how to make periscopes and suddenly he's completely engaged in wanting to know more about periscopes. So I think through having um, enabling the children to have that time to explore their passions and interests you really start to see some results and engagement in their learning. So can you tell me what have you been working on this morning? Trying to make a periscope. And how are you teaching yourself to do that? With a book and the computer, we're going to get them out and glue them to um, some cardboard and put a roof and do it twice to make it. And then we're going to glue the top and of the mirror and put a roof on and then um, do the next step, which I can't remember. I think walking around the studio in the morning is a really good example of how we collaborate as a team. So you can see there's the woodland art going on in the background. Um, there's all the robotics and computer science stuff that's out, which I always make sure is available for the children. And then we've got some really artistic drama teachers that set up and um, model to the children how to dress up and 
and do acting as well and through the cafe and through dress ups. So when we're deciding what way to take the play versus learning for the children, we sit down with them every couple of weeks and we have a big Google Doc, a list of the things that they want to have available for them to play with. Um, so they're always putting input into what sort of things are out. So we're kind of saying to them, well, if you're bored, then you've kind of got a chance to add things to it. So they've always got a, um, a say in what's going on. It's really important to have some kind of idea of what the children are doing each day and how they're progressing and if they're taking risks with their learning or if they're going back to the same sort of things with time after time. So um, every time after they've had their play-based learning sort of for the first half an hour, then they're doing a reflection on what they've learned today or what they can try and do better tomorrow. So um, that's, that's the way that we're assessing it at the moment, them reflecting and, and trying to improve it as they go. And we're finding that just the engagement of them wanting to complete these projects, such as Nathan's Periscope, keeps them on track and keeps them wanting to progress what they're doing.